It's Captain Matt, Boater Secret Weapon, and today we are talking about the state of the boating industry market for consumers. Are boat prices falling? Well, let's take a look and uh, answer that question. Is this a great time to buy? It is October 3rd, uh, 2022, as I record this. So let's take a look at some of the responses from dealers from a, a survey that the industry does. Uh, prices have raised over 35% in three years, talking about where prices have gone uh, recently, but where are they headed? That's what we're going to get into. Um, we're watching to see if the mood shifts further in the fall, beginning to put some discounts and advertising into our inventory levels are balanced going into the fall. So these are comments from actual dealers. Uh, the retail buyer is getting tired of the manufacturer's shell game. There's been a lot of issues. If you've been in the market, you know exactly what this is a dealer talking. They're, they're dealing with some of the same things. They have a little more inside information, but they're getting tired of it as well. Inventory is turning positive, which means that they actually have inventory available, but lack of customer interest doesn't help. So the high prices, the issues with the manufacturer, shell game and pricing, uh, and some other things that we're going to talk about. What does the dealer sentiment look like on inventory? Well, there's still over 50% of them are saying our inventory is too low on new boats. 22% are saying, hey, we're too high. So it was just you know, this spring, it was nearly 100% of them were saying, hey, we don't have enough boats to sell. And only a couple percent were said we're too high. But that's starting to shift. And this is from July. And I would guess if you were to, to pull them now in uh, September, that that number probably has grown a little bit more of, hey, we're too high. The folks that are in used inventory, well, in July, they're the same type of type of numbers. We're about mid 50% and uh, not quite to 20% on too high. So there again, it's used inventory a little bit tighter according to the dealers that, um, hey, we don't have enough used boats to sell. We would like to have more. Again, this is from July. And I would say that number has probably increased. And the too low number, uh, more people are saying, hey, we're, we're getting close to a decent level of inventory, even as they go into the slow season. So what have the trends of the industry been? Well, everything is down uh, year over year. This is year to date pricing. This is from statistical survey. And I just took the main segments of pleasure boaters. Uh, and, and then the, the red one is the total segment. So aluminum fishing boats down over 25%, bow riders and deck boats down over 26%, pontoons down only 12%, saltwater outboards, which is mainly your center console, walk arounds, uh, bay boats, that kind of thing down just over 14%. And if you look at the overall power boat segment that takes in wake boats, jet boats, cruisers, yachts, that kind of thing, they're down 16.5%. 8%. Some of that, I'm going to say most of that is attributed to we can't get the product to sell. Had the had the inventory been available, my gut tells me those numbers would have been equivalent to 2022, maybe slightly higher, but just pretty darn close. I think most of that is, hey, we can't find the boats to sell earlier this season. Uh, that's that's my gut what that is. And I've talked about it before in these market updates. So what are some other economic indicators that we can look at to try to predict the future here a little bit to see our price is going to be going down? Well, the consumer price index, what consumers pay for retail goods, um, well, it's starting to level off. It got up over 8%, almost touched 9%, uh, and it's, it's slowly tracking back down. Uh, but you compare that to wages, just overall wages, uh, which have been very flat since uh, 2021. That's just a, a quick snapshot, January 21 to August of 2022. Uh, but the big thing is, hopefully, the consumer price, that inflation number is going to slow down. As we look at gas prices, you can see right here, the gas prices have started to go down, which is good. That's a huge impact on the consumer price, but we're still up over what fuel was a year ago. Uh, 319 um, and, and some change, and, and the current average is 379.9. Uh, so we're still, what is that, 60, 50, 60 cents over where we were um, just a year ago. So, But it's trending down, which is, is positive news. Hopefully that continues. 
What about the producer price index? So we know that things go down the line. The They first have to make the raw material. It gets made into the components. The components gets made into the whatever the part goes on the boat. Then it gets sent to the manufacturer. The manufacturer puts it all together to make a boat, and then it's shipped to the dealer. What's been happening, all these price increases are coming as from from July of 2020, we've seen the cost of goods to make the product. So the cost of goods sold for the manufacturers has gone up, which has led to price increases. Demand has kept that extra inflated, but we're seeing that price index come down, the producer price index. So these things are, hey, these are what is needed to make the goods that people sell on the retail level. So this is on the manufacturer side. That's a good sign overall for inflation. You can see it dipped below zero. So it went to a negative kind of popped back up there. And, and this is again, July, 2022. So that was probably May or June. Good signs that hopefully the inflationary pressure is slowing down on the uh, manufacturer side of things. Unfortunately, we're seeing interest rates go up. This is from just a, a quick snapshot from um, about a year's time frame. So October 29th, 2021 to September 29, 2022. And those interest rates, these are, are mortgage interest rates from Fannie Mae. Uh, I'm sorry, this is from Freddie Mac. But you're still, you're seeing the same thing. The, the impact on this are the same impacts that's going to be on the, or similar impacts that you're going to see on the retail pricing for recreational boat loans. And we've seen those rates tick up as well, which makes buying the same amount of boat um, for a finance person more expensive in their cash flow. What's going on in the actual world of the demand? I always go to Google Trends when I look at what are consumers actually doing? Because we know everybody that's buying a boat's going to Google and they're searching boats for sale. And that can give us a pretty good indication. Well, if we look at just boats for sale, the most general, we saw a, a big drop in 2008 during that recessionary period, right? What's what we would expect. Um, but then we saw a little bit of dip in 2013, 2014. Then it's trended up. We had that huge spike during the pandemic. It's came down. But what I like to look is where is that trend from 2019? So let's take, let's say the pandemic boom, um, kind of take those out because we know those are an anomaly. We're still down on the peak level. And then if you look, this dip, that low point for the seasonal trend, that happens in about mid-November, pretty consistently. If you're to look at this date, it's going to be early to mid-November in most cases. We are just at the start of October when I pulled this report. And, um, you know, so we're not as low as we were, but we're probably going to hit that level. That line is pretty straight down, and it's about the same angle that you would expect. So demand is lower but it's not like it's dropped off completely. There's still a good number of people searching boats for sale. New boats for sale, if we look, that number is down slightly. Uh, but again, we're going to compare the 2019. We're going to throw out the pandemic years. It's actually was higher this spring. And again, if we look at that mid-November time period, we are, we're probably going to hit about that same level. So yes, it's dropped from where it was, we're not hitting those highs, but we're not going all the way down to zero, which is, you know, good news for the industry on the price. Well, we've got to take that into consideration. Use boats again. What's the trend there? Well, it's definitely down from 2019. And if we look, well, that's about the same level as the end of the year in 2019 before we hit that pandemic. So the used inventory well, that makes sense. People that have money are buying new boats. They're less impacted by a recession that they have the fun money to spend and they can just pull it right out of their, their checking account or out of their market account. Hey, they're not as concerned. The people that are searching pre-owned boats, well, they're a little bit more on a budget. And so we are seeing that start to tick down just a little bit. And I would venture to say if we were to pull this at the end of November, we might see if the trend continues, we might see that number lower than what we saw in 2019. Now, these aren't absolute numbers. They're just a relative on a, a zero to 100 scale uh, from Google. So it's it's not an exact number. It's not an exact comparison, but it's a trend. And uh, the, the trend appears to be down. What about pontoons. Well, let's look segment by segment, because what I think is happening is I think each segment is being impacted different. 
as well as some regions, which we'll talk about that. But if you look, the new number, well, that's up. What about the pre-owned um, or, or what about just the pontoons for sale on the low end? Well, we can see it hit nearly that zero mark and we are kind of leveling off there in October, early October. Will we get down? Well, even if we get down to zero, that's kind of what you expect seasonally. But pontoons seem to be holding up reasonably well uh, compared to the overall picture. Center consoles were kind of that same thing. We even had a little bit of jump. It's a saltwater market. They're not as seasonal because, hey, the Florida, uh, the the Texas, the Gulf Coast boaters, they're buying boats year-round. They don't have the same seasonality as somebody up in Minnesota or up in Canada. And so we're seeing, all right, 2019 number dipped pretty close to that zero level, uh, but we haven't got there. As a matter of fact, we're uh, we're quite a bit up from that. What will happen in November? My my venture to say it probably won't be as low as it was in 2019. So there's still some decent demand there in center consoles. We can make the assumption based on the overall numbers that used center consoles, used pontoons are down slightly. Uh, but uh, aluminum fishing. Aluminum fishing is an interesting market. It's all over the map. It's not quite as seasonal because you have some some fall multi-species of uh, time. You do have the seasonality in winter, uh, but you also don't have the the um, heat of summer buying. It, it's a different market. But again, you can see those trends, and we're dipping down a little bit. Uh, the high was still higher than we were in 2019, but it looks like. Hey, it's, it's a little bit less overall when you compare 2019 to 2022. Um, and, and we're seeing the same thing as we talk to dealers that that aluminum market is down. Well, what about wake boats, cruisers, jet boats, deck boats? The, the numbers are much, much smaller when you look at these. So we're just going to look at them kind of bunched together. And we see similar trends. Jet boats are significantly down on the new side. And you can see we're coming down. Yeah. You know, not not too bad um, there. If you look at deck boats, if you look at wake boats, they're they're ticking way down. Again, fairly expensive boats, but um, we're seeing similar trends throughout all of the segments. But segment by segment, it's different. So it, the reality of if you're looking for boats, you're going to see different price drops happen depending on your segments and also depending on the market that you're in. So oh, since I started doing this. In February, I pulled boats for sale, and I just looked at used boats in Boat Trader. In my zip code, um, gas-powered, $10,000 to $75,000, kind of that sweet spot of the people that listen, uh, all power boats, all gas, used. We had $1,116 for sale. In April 26th, we had just under um, $1,100 or just over $1,000, $1,014. What's going on today? So October 3rd, I pulled this at 4.49 p.m. Eastern time, over 1,400 boats for sale. So we've got more boats for sale in that same query. Huh. So maybe there are some people that are looking to get out of the market. It's, you know, it's a third more. It, it's not now maybe 25% more, but it's it's more than what we've seen in the earlier in the year. It, it's somewhat seasonality. You can expect that. This time of year, you see more... Um, individuals put their boats for sale. So it's not totally unexpected, but it's a, a significant enough increase that I think it's more than just the seasonality of it all. But here's what was interesting. You hit this little price drop. Who's put a price drop on their listing recently? Of that 1,440 boats for sale, over 300, exactly 300 of them have dropped their price. Interesting. Um, maybe that price drop is happening. Maybe boat prices are falling on the used side. Well, we still have some of those same issues we've been talking about. The manufacturers are having a hard time hiring. We're having some still some logistics issue, although that's getting better and better. Uh, but we're still having some supply chain and logistics issues, especially with motors, especially the bigger horsepower motors, 250, 200, 250, 300, 350s. In those segments, 425s, the 600, we're still having some, hey, I would like that motor, but we just can't get it. Some manufacturers are being hit more than others. Um, not seeing that same thing on the stern drive market. It's more on the outboard segment and then quality issues. I think it's it's part because of all of these things. The, the quality skilled labor is tough to come by. The boat building process isn't just streamlined where it takes us three to five weeks to build this boat and it's done. 
it's, you know, we start it, we're missing something, we have to adjust the components, the suppliers out, uh, we don't have that, we have to switch material, and we're having some issues because of the starts and stops in production. It's getting better for sure, but then we get the boat done and we still don't have a motor to hang on it. And we've got a yard full of boats that are sitting complete, just waiting for the motor and the consumers waiting for their boat. Uh, and they're just not coming because we can't get the motor. So that's still in play. One thing that I found was interesting, if you look at the RV trends, they're very predictive of what we see in the boating industry. They're a little, give a little sneak peek because they're, they're a little bit ahead of us in the industry, maybe a quarter to two quarters ahead. Well, what we're seeing are the travel trailers, the fifth wheel, so the pole behinds, not motorized. They saw a big dip earlier this year in pricing, and that stayed down and kind of has trended down if you look at the trends. Even if you look since, you know, fall of last year, that trend has been down. What's happened there is the manufacturers continue to build and build and build and build because they didn't have the same supply chain issues when it came to the motors. That component of when you want to put a motor in something, there's a lot more complexity, a lot more things that you need instead of just the aluminum, uh, the fiberglass, and the you know the wood to build the interior and the furnishings. When you put that engine in there, now there's electronics involved. Now there's drivetrains, transmissions, more complex components. So if you look at the motor home value trends, and these are from, from the auction, you don't see that same steep dip. You're still seeing a trend that's going slightly down, uh, but it's not as significant, and it's been buoyed up even in July of this year. You know, it dipped, it jumped back up to the 2021 pricing levels, and August was down a little bit. So when you start looking at the motorhome and the RV industry, the supply the the manufacturers weren't able to build those motorhomes as quickly and so there wasn't the glut of inventory like we're seeing on some of the travel trailers so as you compare that to the boating industry well a big reason the boating industry is still having issues is because they can't produce enough inventory for the dealers people would love to have their boats today but they're just not coming in same thing i mentioned why why the the numbers are down for 2022 year to date versus 2021. Well, a part of that, a big part of that is because the boats aren't being completed and gotten to the dealers in a timely manner. And people are waiting 6, 12, 18, 24 months to get their boat. So the prices are kind of inflated or are kept buoyant because of that uh, versus if they're overproducing. And we haven't got to the point that I've seen in the marine industry where the manufacturers are overproducing in most segments. So hopefully that makes sense because I think that's an interesting thing to keep in mind. We had talked previously about inflation in the aluminum sector specifically. It, March of 2022, we hit this, the peak there and we've dropped down significantly when it comes to the pricing You know, by over $2,300 um, on the the aluminum market. So that's going to help in the pontoons in the aluminum boat segment that getting the cost down there. And again, it's that producer price index, not the consumer price index, but the producer price index of these raw materials that's coming down and that's going to be helpful. Um, same thing with the motors. A lot of those have aluminum in it, which was brazing up the prices and why the manufacturers have continued to increase pricing. And because of that, I think we're coming to the end. Many manufacturers have already announced price increases through Q4 of 2023, but I think that should get us over the hump where their cost of goods to build the boats should be coming back down to normal levels. But you got to remember what happens is they have their stockpile of, of inventory for building the boats that they need, and they had that built up. Now, as prices crept up, there's a delay in that going through the process. And then same thing, when the producer price increase goes down, which it started to several months ago, well, it takes some time for those new components and that to work all the way through the system to end to the to get to the end consumer and to bring prices down. Manufacturers don't tend to just drop prices, though, unless there's uh, supply uh, limitation or demand limitations. So we'll be interested to see what happens there and where the demand goes, but we still have more supply or I'm sorry, more demand than we do supply. 
that keeps prices a little bit higher. Some manufacturers uh, and models are still three to 12 months out. I had somebody tell me the other day that they were quoted 18 months out on a uh, higher horsepower center console for delivery. So there's still a big runway of boats that are, are pre-sold that the manufacturers still need to build before they can build up the dealer inventory. Now, we'll talk about that maybe a, a false uh, reality as we get further down the line for a couple of reasons. And we just had the hurricane that came through uh, the Gulf Coast of Florida. Then it made its up its way to the Carolina coast. And there's going to be a lot of hurricane boat sales that's going to increase demand in some of those coastal markets. Now, that's probably three to six months out because they have to work through the insurance claims. But every time there's a hurricane, there is a bump in demand in boat sales because they're replacing boats that were already in existence. These people weren't in the market to buy, but now their boats got totaled. They've got a check and many of them will buy another boat. Some of them will say, okay, I'm out. Uh, but many of them will buy another boat and, and those people will be back in the market um, to kind of boost up demand a little bit. So we talked about there's a lot of positives and there's a lot of negatives on that price pressure. One of the negatives is, Hey, the S&P 500, just kind of my general guide for the stock market that I'm using for this is we're down. You can see that uh, we kind of hit that downward, that downward spot. And um, if you look right here, we had a little longer look. So, so this is um, to October 3rd, and then we're going to, we're going to zero in on a little bit more on that S&P, but we're going to go that trend for five years is pretty steep. So we are actually above where we were before that recession, a, a decent amount above. So even though we've been coming down, um, we're still in a better spot than we were. Now, if you look at the last six months, it's been significantly down. So as you zoom into the short term, it looks awful. If you have a little bit longer view of it, hey, the, the portfolio is still up significantly. If that continues to go down, that's going to really reduce demand, uh, especially on the new inventory. And here's why I, I bring this up. And I also bring up the interest rates earlier is because I've got some predictions that demand is slowing. But like I said, inventory is still um, still limited. We're not the supply demand, I don't think has has crossed yet where demand is lower than supply. I think I still think even though it's trending down that in many segments that the demand is still higher than supply, not all segments, but many. If we see the interest rates continue to go up, stock market continue to go down. Some of those people that have ordered boats and put deposits in are going to say, man, I could afford that boat. Uh, six months ago, but now when it gets here to delivery, are they going to follow through on that transaction? And, you know, I put a thousand or $2,000 down to order it. Uh, but am I going to walk away or am I going to write the other $98,000 check to buy this boat? That'll be interesting to see in the next six months, what happens. My gut tells me most of them will stick, but we will lose many of those sales. And the higher the rates get, the lower the stock market gets, the more of those we'll lose. MSRP, they're going to continue to increase on new boats through the, the beginning of the 2024 model year, which is actually about August 2023. So that's when the new model years typically come out. And again, at that point, the producer price index should have flown all the way through. And so the actual cost of building these boats should be down a little bit. Um, although the labor costs are, are going to be continuing to go up. So that may level out a little bit. So I don't see that we're going to see decreases in the price of new boats, but I don't think we'll see the crazy, the, what a 35% in three years uh, that the, my very first slide that the dealer said, you know, that's outrageous. I don't know that we'll see a, a significant decline, but I think we'll definitely see a leveling out, maybe a decline, but it's not common for that to happen. I, what I don't see are those fire sale discounts expected, but I do see more discounts. So it has been, we're selling this at MSRP, maybe a slight discount to MSRP. Not a ton of negotiation was happening because it was, if I can get the boat, I'm going to take it. Uh, but you could still negotiate. What I see happening now is I see dealers and maybe even some manufacturer rebates, but dealers giving more discounts up front. And I think it's going to be segment by segment. Like I said, pontoons, center consoles, 
I doubt it. I think we're still demand is much higher than supply in those areas right now, especially if you're looking at a bigger horsepower, a, a more luxury one. Um, I, I still think that the demand is outstripping the supply there. If you're looking at the aluminum fishing boats, if you're looking at the uh, bow riders and deck boats, I think you're going to see, hey, maybe there's some opportunity and maybe you're going to see more advertised discounts and pay attention to that. If dealers are advertising discounted prices and manufacturers are throwing rebates out there, that means in their whole book of business or their whole dealership group or just their store, they're saying, I feel like we have too much inventory and we need to start discounting this to, to make sure we're churning it so that we can be ready for those 2024 models. Um, so pay attention to that. That's going to be a pretty good indicator for you as a buyer to, huh, how, how aggressive can I be in negotiating with these folks? And how, how interested are they in moving this boat as quickly as they can versus making the most money on that particular unit? And I think it's going to be segment by segment and even region by region. I think different regions are going to be impacted by this recession more, um, more and more. So used boat prices, I think we're going to start seeing th that normal level of depreciation. So instead of used boat appreciating, like we've seen in some areas, crazy amounts, um, we're going to start to see that normal, you know, three to five to 10 on newer stuff, 10, 15% depreciation that you would have expected, you know, three years ago, had the pandemic not happened, that would have just been the normal course of things. And I think we're going to start seeing that come back. But again, it's going to be segment by segment because if the new boats, if there's more supply or is, if there's more demand than there is supply on the new side, that's going to, that's going to hold those used boat prices up. Okay. So when we get to the point where, all right, demand is lower than supply. Now we're going to see the used boat prices drop because, Hey, there's got to be a difference in there. Otherwise, I'm going to I'm going to buy new. And so you'll start to see those come down so they can move the used boats. Consumers that need to sell their boats or want to sell their boats, they're going to have to drop it if they want to actually get rid of it. Um, so that, that's and then interest rates. I think interest rates are going to continue to go up overall from everything that you're you're seeing, which means boats that are financed are going to get more expensive um, and just. A fifty thousand dollar boat at six percent is more expensive than a fifty thousand dollar boat at six and a half or seven percent, which means we're going to cut some people out of the market. They're going to have to go lower, and that can lead to a decrease. So, what's going to impact pricing in the future? Well, continued inflation. Hopefully, we're getting that in in line, and some things are being done there. Uh, but higher inflation is going to be in higher prices on new boats. The price increase that the manufacturers are putting in place. There's actual real price increases that are happening on their component parts uh, and their cost of goods sold. It, it, that's just the reality of the situation. We saw that uh, uh, producer price index. I mean, it skyrocketed and now it's starting to come down. Um, but it, it, until all that works through the system, you know, it, it's um, that's going to keep prices higher if we see that inflation go back up. Lots of buyers walking away from ordered boats. Like I, I mentioned that if with the rates going up, with manufacturer pricing going up, potentially um, stock market going down, people might say, "Whoa, this isn't the right time to buy a boat." Even if you're going to keep my 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 deposit, my two thousand dollar deposit, I would rather you keep that two thousand dollars than I buy a hundred thousand dollar boat um, in a recessionary time where I might lose my job, where my my portfolio is going down to a level, my retirement. I see that dropping. Um, those types of things will have people walk away from that. Like I said, there's still, a, you know, in some areas, three to six to 12, even 18 months of, of a runway of boats sold that haven't been produced yet. But that doesn't mean that those boats are hundred percent gone. Uh, there's a chance and you're seeing it on, if you follow on social media, people saying, I had this boat, I think I'm trying to decide, do I want to buy it? Or am I going to walk away from it? Um, the worse things get, the more you're going to see people walk in. And now that runway went from 18 months and now it might be six months or it went from six months and now it's, hey, we're just filling dealer inventory and we're starting to build that level of inventory back up, which when it gets to a certain level, that's when the when the falling prices are going to come. Overproduction of new boats as demand slows. We know demand is slowing. You can you can see it in the Google Trends. Again, when that if that happens and, and it's almost assuredly going to happen. 
uh, that manufacturers always overproduced. They, they, they can't leave that money on the table and not produce. There's certain scale that they have to hit that makes their, their numbers work better. And um, so if that level it's when that starts hitting, and it's going to be segment by segment, region by region, you're going to start seeing rebates, and you're going to start seeing more dealer discounts and pricing uh, advertisements. When you see that, hey, we know that should lead to lower level of prices for everything, and uh, it puts it more of a buyer's market where you have more control, you have more negotiating power and leverage. So my advice to new boat buyers, if you're buying new, Hey, get the Boat Buyers Toolkit. It is, it's a totally free toolkit. You can get it at uh, BoatBuyersToolkit.com. Figure out what your 80% looks like. Make sure you're buying the right boat um, because they still might not have the boat. It's, it may be in stike. It's better than it was a year ago, uh, but there's a chance it won't be. So visit Marina's Boat Ramps dealers and, and make sure the boat that you're buying is exactly what you want. Um, inspect slowly and completely. Remember, that uh, until you write that final check, the boat's not yours. You can still walk. There still have been some quality issues that are out there um, using lesser material, using lesser components in some areas just to get the boats done. Inspect your boat slowly and completely. Make sure you do a sea trial and a demo. You're taking a big risk if you buy a boat without test driving it, even a new boat. I, I know in some areas that in winter you've got the ice and you got to contend with that. Just it, you're taking a risk that um, you got to make sure you got a great dealer. Uh, if you don't have a boat, you can go to Boat Setter, get my boat, um, or, or talk to dealer's clients and maybe run one of those to get a feel for it. And again, before you take delivery and write that final check, inspect the new boats thoroughly. Inspect everywhere that you can, almost like if, uh, exactly like it's a used boat, because there's just been too many situations where new boats have come off. Um, they weren't, something was missed in the building process. The QC was lacking. Uh, the skilled labor wasn't as skilled as it had been in the past. And just make sure you, you, the boat that you buy is in as good a condition as, as it can possibly be. If you're buying used again, get that toolkit. You got to have that toolkit for either one. It's totally free. There's no reason not to get it. Figure out what your 80% likes visit. Same thing. Have your finances ready and approved. And then again, inspect slowly and completely. The boat's not yours until you put up real money. Just because you have some sort of a verbal or even email agreement with somebody, um, until you write the check and they've given you the title, know that they can sell that boat to somebody else and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, maybe there's a lack of integrity, but there's no... There's nothing that says just because you verbally agreed to it means that it's yours. So make sure that you you understand that. And again, negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. On used, it's going to be really interesting. There's going to be big variances in that used market, I think. Private individuals that are selling that are saying, I'm going to still try to get what, what people were getting two years ago um, when the market was just insane and I'm not negotiating. Hey, forget about it. If it's not right, dealers are going to be saying, hey, we smell, we saw it in some of the comments, we smell that things are starting to slow down and they want to turn inventory. They don't want to get stuck with the depreciating boat. That's the way they've always done business. They want to turn things fast because it, the last three years have been an anomaly. Boats don't appreciate generally. And so dealers know that and dealers want to turn inventory. So maybe some dealers are going to be a better place to buy a used boat because they want to get that off their books. They've got to sell 100 boats, whereas the private individuals only have to sell one. And uh, they may be a little bit more unrealistic. Pay attention to that and make sure that you're negotiating the whole time too. A used boat always. Sea trial, demo. If you buy during the winter a used boat, um, I'm going to recommend don't. Um, it's just, it's too risky to buy a used boat in the wintertime when you can't put it under load. You can't see how all the systems work in the water. You can't put it through its paces. And it's just, I've had, I've had subscribers that have told me it's just horror stories of we bought this boat. We didn't follow your advice and we got screwed. Um, and then completely inspect that boat before taking delivery, writing the check, including verifying all serial numbers. So we talked about negotiating the magic money saving method. It's a, a system that I've developed. It's in the first time boat buyer Academy, but that negotiation piece is, I mean, that'll pay for the program 10 times over if you use it and this market, it's only going to get more and more and more important to negotiate because there's going to be more and more power 
on your side as the buyer. And if you know how to do it the right way, um, you, you can save a significant amount of money, uh, regardless of what the prices are that they're advertising. Uh, I, I think there's going to be a significant amount of opportunity for savings in the next uh, three to six months from the list price that they quote you. And, uh, and that's a great way to do it. So what advice do I have besides negotiate, get that magic money saving method in the Boat Buyers Academy? Well, if you're buying new, you may still have to order a boat. There's some segments where you're just going to have to do it. Inspect something similar, even if it's a little bit older, and realize that there's still going to be some uncertainty in the delivery times. Um, I, I don't think manufacturers have that dialed in. There's still some supply chain issues. There's still some motor issues, especially in the bigger horsepowers and the more popular segments in your area. So be aware of that. If you've got to travel to find a boat, make sure you work out the warranty, but try if possible to buy from a local dealer. Your overall experience will be much better. Look for discounts, look for manufacturer rebates, look for dealer discounts that are advertised and negotiate even more. So don't just take those discounts and say, oh, I'm, I'm happy with it. Negotiate it. Use that magic money saving method in the Boat Buyers Academy. If you're buying used, there's still some turds on the market, some some boats that people bought during the pandemic that you know they should have never bought and are putting them back on the market, trying to get rid of them. Uh, there's going to be some hurricane boats that are going to be coming on the market. We mentioned that in the it's going to add to demand. But those boats that got salvaged, uh, the boats that have been damaged in some way, they end up at auctions, they end up at salvage yards, and somebody buys them, and then they make their way up to Montana. They make their way uh, into Iowa or, or Minnesota. Um, so you want to get the boat history report so you can check that and see, was this boat registered in Florida, and why and how did it end up here? Uh, because if it did, it's probably an issue. Uh, and there's also some people that bought during um, the pandemic that really didn't know how to take care of a boat the proper way. And now they're selling it after using it for a couple of years and it had some deferred maintenance. So you really want to follow that toolkit that um, that we offer for free. Uh, do the inspections, go through it so that you don't get stuck with somebody else's problem. There's also some people that are, hey, let's see what I can get. Um, the people that are like, I'll sell my boat if I can get the right price. Or they're just totally unrealistic based on what's happened in the last two years. They bought the boat and the demand was crazy high and they paid this amount and there was no negotiation and there were seven offers and they're going to try to sell it and make some money on top of it and they're just unrealistic know your market so that you don't way overpay for the boat know about what the value should be you can use nada go watch my other videos on how to do that uh, there's a lot of them out there you may want to travel i mentioned I, I see this being segment by segment and region by region that have uh you know more and less impact if you're in an area with less impact and things are still going strong Maybe travel a couple hundred miles into an area that's been hit a little bit harder. Expand your search as you're, as you're researching those used boats to maybe 300, 400, even 500 miles. But just make sure you figure out the transportation cost into the total cost of, of buying that boat uh, because there's fuel or you got to pay for somebody to transport it. Uh, you got the back and forth and looking at it. But there may be some opportunity to save a little bit extra by going out of your market area, especially unused. Be patient. Always be patient on used boats. Look for that right one, but be ready and willing to act quickly when you find that it is the right one. So inspect slowly, but act quickly when you find the right one that's uh, that you negotiate a good deal. And then definitely negotiate. There's going to likely be price concessions. Uh, you know, we saw it on the on the search. There were 300 boats that they've already dropped the price. Where again, those people were. I'm going to put the see what I can get price out there. And now I haven't used my boat for a couple of months and well, we'll drop it a thousand or two thousand dollars and we'll see if that gets some action on it. So there's there's always going to be those opportunities, but you have to you have to learn how to ask for the discounts and negotiate. Um, and again, the magic money saving method is awesome at that. Grab that toolkit, boatbuyerstoolkit.com. Leave your question or comment down below. If you like the video, I would love it. Really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up and uh, and liked it. Share it with anybody or your boating groups that you think will find it valuable. Uh, and remember, life truly is better on a boat.